our feeling are against it because it represents an unnatural behavior for the shark and can be a potentially dangerous situation for the animals and for human involved in the activities. The sharks in a slob, are, they come to you. You don't even need to swim after them because they come right up to you. We're seeing quite interesting behaviors in relation to the people in the water. Um, this is something that sounds, sounds amazing, but actually it's my first reaction was that it was really worrying um, because I've never seen whale sharks behave like that. Um, as yet we haven't analysed the data fully to look for exact patterns. It may be that there's different personalities for different whale sharks. Um, for example, certain individuals in the water have been noted by researchers to be um, more approaching. I was doing a behaviour study by one of the boats and suddenly I looked round and one of the bigger sharks, who we actually have named Diver Eater, D-E, appropriately, was coming right for me at quite a speed, faster than I've seen most whale sharks uh, travelling. And this was a seven metre shark coming directly for me. And I thought, my goodness, what is it doing? I see that the whale sharks in Oslo are acting differently. They somehow are, well, I can say more aggressive. We've noticed an increase maybe, I don't know if it's competition, but it appears that way. Um, later in the day when the feeding boats pay less attention to the sharks because there's less guests, the sharks will uh, try and steal each other's boats or attempt to feed from the same boat. And I came out of the water that day and I said to Anna, the, the project researcher, I said, Anna, you know, I don't, I don't trust these sharks. In my opinion, it's not an aggressive act. It's inquisitive. They're trying to suss out who you are and what you are. Also, the more habituated they come to having people in the water, it appears that they become less concerned with the people in the water. So they are less likely to see you as a threat and therefore less likely to actively avoid you in the natural way that they usually do. I've seen videos also of them bumping into the snorkelers and the swimmers and going after scuba divers. It appears to be that um, they like bubbles. So when the snorkelers are kicking, the whale sharks will follow the bubbles uh, feeding, in a sense. Uh, again, with divers' bubbles, they do the same thing. So they will approach the bubbles as they hit the surface and um, act as though they're feeding from them. They're really unpredictable and they're aggressive. I've never seen whale sharks behave like that. I honestly, I, I really wondered if, if this is what the whale sharks are like now. How are they going to be in a few weeks' time or a month's time? The straight contact is really straight, like it's really, it's a really close up. So close that the animal is actually pushing the boat, begging for more food. And this is not a natural behavior. Um, the presence of the animal itself here for so long is not a natural behavior. The fact that you have the same animal here for five, six, eight months, this is good for the people, but it's very bad for the shark. At least we don't know what's the long-term effect for this shark. Because here they're fed on Uyap most of the time, and the interaction lasts eight hours every day. It means it's for these eight hours, they spend time in shallow water, in contact with people, in close quarter with boats, and feeding only on one or two kilos of Uyap. In a natural environment, they would have been feeding probably in krill, in uh, coral spawning, in fish spawning, in different kind of invertebrates. So having a much rich diet, uh, using their muscles much more because they're migrating, so keeping their metabolism on the natural level. If we keep some animal here, we don't know what's the effect on the entire population because we may affect the reproductive cycle, we may affect their diet, so we may affect their migration. Maybe they're supposed to be somewhere else now. It's interesting to see if um, long term, if they're going to have an association in their heads between food and people in the water, and whether to them, that's where the food comes from. Um, which obviously long term could cause potential problems if they go elsewhere and start approaching people who 
are not accustomed to them or didn't come to see them and may be more intimidated and react in a negative fashion. Once a shark gets used to get close to a boat because he's expecting some food, he will not dis discern, so recognize or detect the difference between the different boats. And we just try to approach every boat of fishermen that is paddling around. Sharks approaching boats is, is not a good thing. I think it can only lead to some problems, whether that's going to be a propeller cut from getting too, too close to a motorized boat or worse. Coaching. We base our decision on the knowledge and um, despite the fact that everybody keeps saying there is nothing known about the whale shark, this is not true. If you just google it, there is more than 3,500 papers about whale shark in the world. Seeing whale sharks so close was amazing but I was genuinely scared. Even after seeing over a hundred whale sharks in Donsol, my second day in Oslo, I was scared of a whale shark, the gentle giant. I think what would be important is for people to have a reference point for the whale shark. When you see whale sharks in their natural habitat without being disturbed, um, they swim more calmly. Realistically, it's very hard to say if the behaviours exhibited by the whale sharks in Tanawan are natural or uh, the normal that you'd see because limited research has been done this regularly on the same whale sharks to know exactly how whale sharks behave. We really want something that is sustainable for the shark and the communities. The welfare of the community is as much as important as the welfare of the shark, but we need to find a balance. I feel like I've built a relationship with some of the fishermen at least anyway. And no conservation effort works by going cold turkey on whatever environmental problems there is. You have to work to find a solution that works locally. And I would love to see the feeding stop and not have it impact the local community. I mean that would be the absolute perfect scenario.